Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you guys how we make this style of wire wrapped crescent moon. Now at the time of recording we actually came up with this design at like the 3 hour 10 minute mark I think um, <laughs> from our uh, auction, our live stream auction um, that was just, it was phenomenal. Like I had so much fun. It was the, what day is it? December 3rd. Uh, live auction and I, I can't remember I call her silver but that's not her full screen name um, but silver if you're watching this thank you so so much for suggesting why you're wrapping a moon with the points up because you completely like opened the floodgates of creativity and like it, I had such a magical time hanging out with y'all in that live auction so thank you guys to everybody who came out and hung out now i'm going to be calling these our on the fly moons uh thank you to our friend sounds like onomatopoeia or you know denise thank you so much denise um for uh the name for that as well um i've been watching a ton of oxana crafts tutorials and i've been so inspired to try to branch out into a more like sleek and minimal and just really elegant wire wrap style and I really feel like um Oxana guided my hand on this one like she definitely uh if y'all aren't watching her videos you should because she's a goddess <laughs> an absolute wire wrapping goddess so that being said let's go ahead and get started I want to show you guys a couple of different variations um before we get into this because like most things this is just a platform for y'all to spring off of um and I, I can't wait to see what you guys make. But there was this one that was our first one that we wrapped. Um, and you, I was kind of brainstorming it out. Like I actually have the little drawing here of, um, <laughs> we were, I was sketching it out. And cause I was like, oh, I'll, I'll make it after the video. But even in the middle of the auction, I was like, guys, I have to make this. <laughs> so, um, oops, super durable. Um, but so this one's a little wonky in the middle because I had like wire wrapped and then tried to redo it but that is the first variation that I, or first version that I've made the second version same as the first but a little cleaner I absolutely love that holographic moon we have added or will be adding we'll see I don't know when this tutorial is going up so um but we will have added more moons to our shop and we're going to try to be a little bit better about keeping them in stock and also keep an eye on it we do shop updates every monday and we're really hoping to start having some crescent moons made in out of fused glass which would be really cool i think but we're still going to keep the resin ones as well and then i wanted to show y'all another variation where i started this one is here is going to be the one that the tutorial is about because I think it'll be I think that'll be really good um, like this is I think my favorite version of this first version of the design because we will be doing a slightly more complex tutorial in the future and I'm, I'm taking the time to show you guys the variations here at the beginning um, just so you can have a solid idea of what it is that we are making and then this one here we actually did with oh there was another one um, we had done one where it was points down with a little like swirly thing dangling down um but this one is using two tones of wire which I really really liked that and it has some little spirals up on the sides so there are infinite ways that you can customize this and make it your own and just just really have fun with it that's the whole point of all of this is to have fun so hopefully uh you've assembled your materials we'll have a crescent moon either one from our shop or one that you've made or one that you've purchased from somewhere else just however but um and also i'm sure this could be modified for on uh donuts as well actually thinking about it that's a really good idea um wire snips round nose pliers mandrel pliers and then whatever pliers you like to use for opening and closing jump rings because we're going to be attaching chain to it which all of the tools and materials will be linked down in the video description below and we may actually now this is an idea we may put together a kit um that has the wire the chain and the moons keep an eye out for that on our website as well you guys um <clears throat> So I'm going to be pulling off two lengths of, let's do 13 inches, 
I, last night I was doing it, at, again, at the time of recording, so when I was prototyping this, I should say, um, I was using 12 inches, but it doesn't hurt to give yourself just a little bit extra, because if you have a little bit more wire to play around with, um, I don't know, it's just nice. It gives you room for creativity. Now, we will be doing an advanced version of this tutorial, too, that includes a grooved cab um, being set there in the center, but I need to prototype that out a little bit first before teaching it. So, okay, we have our two lengths of wire at 13 inches, and the moon that I'm using is about an inch and a half in its broadest diameter, so if your moon's bigger, you may want to use uh, more wire. Okay. And now, if you all are familiar with our Itsy Bitsy Spiral, boop, boop, um, we're going to be doing something very similar to that, but I'm holding the wire, both wires, between my fingers to keep them, like, shoulder to shoulder to each other, and then I'm bracing with my fingertips, and I'm holding with my, fing my middle finger and thumb about an inch away from the center where I'm putting my fingers, and we will just twist that over. And it makes just a nice little shape like that. And now from here, and you could use nylon jaw pliers or something to like clamp it, um, or a clamp. But I'm going to just bend to make a little bit of a twist. And I'm going to do this, at least for our moons that we make and sell in our shop, um, I'm going to do four or five of these twists. Now, if they're not perfect, don't sweat it. This is actually a great practice for if you want to do bracelets in this twisted design. Because uh, if they're not perfect, it's going to be bent around the fullness of the crescent of the moon, um, like that thickest part. And so you're not going to see them directly side by side, so it's going to be a lot less obvious if they're um, not perfect. But good practice, because just in case they are perfect, it's like, haha, nailed it. So that is the section that we have. And now I'm going to place this, the large loop, just a little past where the, the edge of the inner curve of the moon is. And, okay, so we're going to be doing our bend right here. You see, we curved it around the moon. I'm going to use my fingers. And then one of the pliers that we like to use for our chain mail, anything with a straight edge, so like chain nose pliers or flat nose pliers would be perfect for this. These are tapered flat nose pliers that I get from Rio Grande. Or Rio Grande. Um, I'm just going to brace and then give it a nice... 90 degree bend just bending it around like that and I, I get a much crispier bend like that whenever I use my pliers but you could just go ahead and use your fingers too that's okay so now ooh, it actually looks like I only needed to do three of the little twists so I'm going to untwist our last twist that we had done just opening it up a little bit that's okay the wire that I'm using is 18 gauge, just realized I didn't say that, it's 18 gauge and the color I'm using is the silver plated titanium but you could use whatever color you like. I think this would work really well with 20 gauge, 18 gauge, 16 gauge, possibly even 14 but that gets kind of oof. So, um, but again we will be exploring variations of this as we uh, move forward into more tutorials. So you can see here how we have split our wires to radiate out just giving a little bit of space and now from here we are going to take this center to the right and I'm just looping it through on the inside of the loop not between the wire and the moon but between the wire like if our wires are one, two, three, and four, we're moving wire three so that it's between wires three and two. And then I'm just going to grab that with my pliers. And I'm holding quite firmly on the moon. Careful because if you're using one of our resin moons, this can bruise the resin. So just make sure you have it in the spot where you want it. 
before you start really cinching stuff down. If you're using one of our glass moons or something like a gemstone, as long as it's like a quartz family and not something like malachite or turquoise that are very soft, um, you shouldn't have to worry about it. So now coming around again with wire two and feeding it through the middle between wires two and three and just grabbing with our pliers and then just cinching down and around. I don't know if you'll be able to have this same manage like wire management and malleability with something that's not Parawire brand. Um, this is not sponsored. I just love their wire and use it in everything. Um, so I can't vouch for other craft wires, but if you're using like a dead soft sterling silver or a dead soft copper from like Rio Grande, um, then it should behave similarly. Okay. So I made the loop and I kind of brought it around just a little bit more just to complete that nice curved loop. But then I opened it up just a bit so that I can get my wire snips in there and snip. I'm just cutting as close as I can. I actually want to go just a little deeper. Um, and make sure you're only cutting the one wire. Maybe when I get in with like a fingernail or a dull pocket knife or something to just... Don't get it in your eyeballs. There we go. So yeah, I just want that loop to be able to close comfortably. And then I'm going to come in on the other side. Do that same thing. Oh goodness. I need to get new wire snips. The tips are wearing out. Um, and now I like to use my bent nose pliers to get in there and just boop. Close that down. And close that down. So we're just tucking the loose end of our 18 gauge wire to where it makes a little loop. You could do multiple wraps if that makes you happy, but uh, right now I'm going for minimalism and like, so the bare minimum to just make it structural. So from here, and you can see I still have quite a big bit of wiggle. So this one is um, a great candidate for if you wanted to hang something from the center let me rummage just a second. Surely I can find it. Okay, so here is the example of if you wanted to hang it points down. By having that bit of space right there at the tip, you can see it made a perfect opportunity to be able to hang a little charm right through that gap. And then um, We'll just do the loops in the same way, but you can see the difference in positioning. So we'll reference back to this one. I'll keep it off to the side um, as we continue to craft. But for this one, I just want to have it hang in points up. Um, to make it tighter, we would have just, whenever we did the bend, had the loop a little lower down. So now we have these wires one and wires four, which will, from, will now just be called wires one and two, just to make it simple but we will bring the right wire around and I want to hold on a point of the moon where it's going to keep it from shifting around so I'm looking for where it's tapering because right now if we just left it where it's wrapped around the center the moon would like slide right out the side unless we used adhesives or something and so we're just wrapping around getting a nice sharp bend there and then wrapping around again for that loop. And so for on the other side, we're just wrapping, following the natural curve of the wire. And you could use like tools, I'm sure, to make like rulers and stuff to make sure that everything's very, very even, equal, and like perfectly symmetrical. Uh, I'm just winging it though. I'm just using my eyeballs. And so now that it's here, no wiggling. The wire's not moving around because it's braced against the taper of the moon. So now I'm going to bring this around the rest of the way to the back on both sides and I'm just going to use the moon itself to measure, snipping there and snipping there. And now I'm going to be using the second smallest, so like the three or four millimeter section of my mandrel pliers. I'm going to grab 
as close to the tip of the wire as I can without it slipping off. And I'm just going to start building up a loop on this, like a, like a almost like a split ring for a key ring. And I want my little loose end to just be sitting between the moon and the wire as we bring that out. Because I just want it peeking out the edge. This is a little different than what we had done in the live stream. Oh, I trapped my first wire. Oh no, there we go. Untrap that wire and do the same thing on the other side. So again, just grabbing onto the wires, toe close to the tip of the wire as I can. And as we're building this, I'm stacking. Hopefully you can see, but that loose end is going to be pinned between our loop and the moon. And that just keeps it from rubbing on clothes or getting snagged on anything, because all we need is just that little bit of a bloop, like peeking over the edge. That way we can hook a chain onto it. But this right here, y'all, this is the core concept. You could do these. That'd be so pretty. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, ah, idea for a future tutorial is like a about this size crescent moon in the center that made from fused glass that we've cut out with our ring saw tutorials coming um with smaller crescent moons like we could just do moons all the way like just a bunch of oh that's gonna be so pretty okay so oh and maybe the one in the middle could be like this with something hanging and then the thing so the difference here that you can see is um like wouldn't that be cute if this moon were just a little bit bigger and then like a smaller moon and then an even smaller moon I love moon stuff. I'm loony for them. But you can see here the difference with where the chain attachment points are. But we still made sure that we were doing it past where it's narrower on this side and thicker on this side. That way there's no movement of the moon in the setting. And uh, just did it that way. So this one I actually hooked through the wire on the back to keep it from shifting as much. You may not find that necessary but uh, I liked it. it I felt like it made it very sturdy and stable so I'm going to show you guys that again one more time and if you're interested let us know and we'll do a completely separate tutorial for this design and we will be doing a future design where inside this loop we either have a bead or a grooved cab that we sell in our shop where we add like a little this is an example of one of our groovy cabs we curate gemstones in our shop as well as sell our fused uh, glass in polymer clay and resin stuff. But we go through with a grooving tool and add this little groove that can accommodate very comfortably a 20 or 18 gauge, but even a 16 gauge wire uh, can kind of fit in there. But you can see it just hugs the wire and you can wrap it without how like that's this I feel like is like the pinnacle of minimalism because you just whoop, around the edges and the front and back stay bare but we use a very like probably a six millimeter oval maybe a six by eight or a four by six and see if we can groove that and put that in the center ring and then just attach to the outer so it's I think that one definitely warrants its own uh, tutorial but um, we will see how things go, and uh, let's go ahead and attach our chain. Save in my scrap wire. Any little odd bits of wire like this, like this one's a little too short for me to, well, we could do like where it's a single bead loop, but I, I like to use the scrap wire to put a bead on and then make a loop on each end, so I hoard everything. And then also hopefully coming eventually uh, will be how we melt down all of our scrap wire because like I have a whole bin over here of just all of my enameled and bare copper um, that I'm saving up to melt down. Focus. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Back on track. Here we go. Uh, I am using an aluminum chain that again in last night's at the time of recording live stream y'all were like why don't you just use an old spool to put your loose chain on and I was like why don't I that's that's a really good idea. So this is aluminum chain that I've gotten from the ring lord. I typically use enameled iron um, like this stuff here but it's thinner uh, but I'm allowed so here we are and I'm going to cut for me I like to make all of our necklaces in our booth a minimum of 18 inches with then like five inches of extender chain um, 
that and then we can always shorten or extend them you know as per request for folks but in general over the past like 15 years of selling our artwork at like craft shows and things like that we found that that's a pretty accommodating size sometimes people want it shorter sometimes people want it longer but we can we can make modifications based on that uh based upon their request so i've cut two nine inch lengths of that and i'm going to go ahead and this is the 19 gauge enameled iron this is the item number from the ringlord.com and this is my favorite size to use for extender chain because whenever i use a lobster clasp i'm just doing what is this four inches Whenever I use a lobster clasp to close, like to secure the necklace, it fits really comfortably through this chain. And so I'm going to hook that onto the end of one of our chains and close it. So that's how that looks. And then here I have, if you're a jewelry maker, even if you don't make chain mail, if you just need solid, good jump rings and you want to find out what sizes you like, I highly recommend this kit from AmericanChainMail.com. Uh, I get it on Amazon. It's linked down in the video description. And purchasing through those links really helps support our channel without any additional expense to you. So we really appreciate that. But also it's a great just starting point to get you started shopping until you find exactly what you need. Uh, I'm using the 18 gauge 1 8 inch, but you can see it has this chart here at the top. And then if you want to reorder, because these are in bright aluminum, which matches aluminum, <laughs> but also the bright silver and titanium tones of Parawire, it it's what I use. I think it matches all right. Um, but after using this, this is in standard wire gauge. So um, their 18 gauge is comparable to Parawire, which is American wire gauge. Um, it's comparable to their 16 gauge but if that's confusing for you i'll just send us an email or something but it can be useful information to have but this wire in this kit as far as i'm aware is standard wire gauge so what you can then go and reorder in whatever metal type you like the rings that you know that you like the size of and i get just about all of our rings either from chainmail joe or american chainmail both of those are on amazon or the ringlord.com Sorry, I realize this is probably way more information than any of you you were interested in, but if I can help even one of you guys to have an easier time with getting to make the things that you want to make, then my work here is done. Like, that's the whole goal of all of this. So I'm just opening that ring, joining the chain to the wire, and closing it. Now whenever we close our rings, we want to make sure that it's not pokey, it's not going to snag, check it in all four dimensions like yeah it feels good and it joins together pretty like I think that works you, you could also um make out like a bead link if you don't have jump rings you could just use wire to make a little like put a little bead on it that matches uh in a way that you like and then just join the ends together that way so lots and lots and infinite options you guys so doing the other ring on the other side, giving that a close. And now I get all of my clasps on Amazon as well. Though I also get them from Fire Mountain Gems is another site I really like, but I was able to find them in bulk in the same material uh, on Amazon. So I just went with that one. And these are the seven by 14 millimeter, I think. I don't know, it's linked down in the video description, y'all. But that's around about the size that I like because even if like your fingers are very cold or you're kind of fumbly, um, they're easy enough to get on. Magnetic clasps work really well also. I love those for necklaces and bracelets. There we go. Closing that ring. So now we can take this. Also, if you're inclined to wearing things on your head, this is a beautiful circlet, I'm just saying. So, um, which we should probably do when we're doing it like this, and then it just goes full wire. Ah, okay. Expect more, more moon tutorials upcoming, y'all. And then I just hook it anywhere along that extender chain, so you can wear it however short or long as you like. And that is how we make this moon necklace.
I really hope that this was helpful to you guys. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below, or you can email us at backtoearthcreations at yahoo.com, uh, and we'll try our best to help you out. Um, if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them beyond just being here and doing what you're doing, uh, please consider joining our Happy Crafter Club. It starts at just a dollar a month, and uh, we actually have a separate video about that that takes you on a tour of the different things that um, we offer from our behind-the-scenes content to our digital downloads to our booty boxes that we send out every month. Um, so thank you guys so, so much. For hanging out and just for inspiring me all the time y'all are the absolute greatest so until next time you guys happy crafting Mwah. bye <laughs> oh and if you make stuff uh you can tag us on instagram or share it to our wall on facebook because i love to see what y'all make so okay bye bye for real now <laughs>